Gospel of Luke chapter 5 and verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, thus the Lord Jesus, to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Galilee, Gensarat, it's actually the Sea of Galilee. Luke calls it here the Lake of Gensarat. It's a small inland water lake in the middle of the land of Israel. Well, it's 80 miles, it's 80 square miles, the Sea of Galilee. And when the Lord Jesus was here in this scene of time, he spent much time around it. Many miracles were performed around its shores and on its sea. And the Lord taught many times around the, the seaside and the hillsides of Galilee. Verse 2, And us, and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes on their net break. And they beckoned on to their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of fish which they had taken. And so also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. And God will bless his word to us tonight. I want you to picture this scene, this particular day, on the shores of Galilee. Peter, this great fisherman from Galilee, the shores of Galilee. He was to become one of the Lord's disciples, as George said, as he prayed tonight. Some of the disciples, the 12 disciples that the Lord picked were fishermen, Peter and Andrew and James and John. Peter was to become a disciple. Peter was to become one of the greatest preachers in the early New Testament church. Many would hear Peter preaching by the Spirit of God, and many would come to know the Lord Jesus and trust him as a result of Peter's preaching. And so here is Peter, and he's standing on the side of the Sea of Galilee, and he has fished all night, and he hasn't even got one bite, not one fish. And so the morning has come, and he's standing on the beach, and he's washing his nets. Now I wonder, can you imagine how Peter felt that particular morning? He had toiled all night, the scripture tells us. He had worked all night. He had worked hard all night. He had pushed, pulled those big nets in over the side of the boat in the darkness. And as the wind would have blew in his face and, and the water would have blew all around him, he had been wet and he was tired and he was fed up. And here he was, and he was just washing his nets. I can't see them being washed too well, can you? Just a quick skate, a quick lap in the water. Wash the seaweed and the, and the, and the, and the, um, the tumbleweed out of them. And, and then he stacked them up on the end of the boat, ready for the next day. Many of you fishermen are in here tonight. It's good to see you here tonight. And I, I'm sure you've had nights like that. That you have toiled all night, you've worked all night, and you've gotten very few fish. Peter had worked all night and he hadn't got one. It reminded me of a memory <clears throat> when I was just a little boy, not that long ago, uh, down at the shore at the lock. One of those fishermen that he was telling you about 
He, uh, he used to park his boat in the Psalm Key where we bring the boats in, the Psalm dredgers in. And me and my brother, when we were small, we used to get onto the bikes during the summer holidays, and we used to go down to the shore. And this man, he was a big stout man, big red face, wore a big set of dungarees, and he had a big zip on the front here. Now in this pocket on the front, uh, there was polo mints, and there was pound notes. Now give him my age away now, pound notes. There wasn't pound coins in those days. Gordon Bell still has a few of those pound notes away, I'm told. But these pound notes. And so my brother Mark and I, we used to stand on the shore in the morning and we used to watch for him coming in. We small fishing boat. And he used to stand at the back and he, he just stared at it. There was an outboard engine and he stared with a rod and he used to be coming in, you see. And uh, we were able to judge on the shore what sort of a night he had had. Because when he was coming in on the front of the boat was up on the water a little. We knew there was plenty of fish in the back of the boat. And uh, he had a big smile on his face. And when he seen us in the shore, he used to put his hand up. And so we knew <coughs> that particular morning that we might have got a packet of polo mints. And we might have got a pound note each. And so we went to the shop and bought something healthy. A piece of fruit or something like that. But then, there were some mornings, and when Tom was coming in, he had his head down, and uh, he never let on he seen us. And so he had had a bad night. The, the boat was fairly level in the water, and so we knew there was no point waiting on him. And so we just jumped in the bikes and went on about our way. And I was thinking about that memory from years ago when I was reading this story this week as I thought about the meeting tonight. And Peter had fished all night and uh, Peter had called Nathan. And so Peter was angry. I want you to think about three things. First of all, I want you to think about a long night. A long night. When we come to the gospel writers, we realize that if you've ever been in the land of Israel, you know that it gets dark very quickly. You're there just about six o'clock and it's light. And then in about 10 or 15 minutes, it just gets black dark very, very quickly. It gets dark, the night's dark. And so uh, it's been a, a long, dark night. When we look at the Gospels, we realize that the night was split into four watches. The, the watches of the night began at 6 o'clock in the evening, 6 p.m. And the first watch of the night was from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Second watch was from 9 p.m. to 12 midnight and so on to 3 a.m. And the 6 a.m., the night in Israel, the, the, there's four watches in the night, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and so Peter had been out all night. He had toiled all night, the Bible tells us. He had been out on the Sea of Galilee for 12 hours. He might have been able to get his head down for 10 or 15 minutes on one or two occasions through the night, as the other guys would have watched. But apart from that, that was it. And so it was a long night. I want you to think then about a parked boat. Because the next morning, he came in and he parked his boat up. And uh, you see, Peter knew nothing, only fishing. I reckon when we read this story that, that, that Peter was about the same age roughly as the Lord Jesus. So he's in maybe about 30 or 35 years of age. He has been fishing from his boy on the Sea of Galilee, so he'd been at it at least 20 or 25 years. He knew every square inch of the Sea of Galilee well, like the back of his hand, as they say. And so he had, he had parked his boat up. The night's fishing had went on, but then God had other plans. And so we have a long night, and we have a parked boat, and then we have a, an empty net. He had toiled all night, the story tells us. And uh, he had caught nothing. And so no fish meant no money. And no money meant no sales. And no sales meant no groceries. 
And so Peter was going to have to go home to his wife with an empty pocket. And she wasn't going to be happy. And a happy wife is a happy life, they say. And so Peter was going home and there was no food in the house. And the children, if there was children, were hungry. And well, you can see that it, it wasn't very good picture. Sure, it wasn't. A long night, a park boat, an empty net. You know, maybe you're in a meeting tonight, and maybe that's a picture almost of your life. Maybe, as it were, there's been a night or two that has been very long. Maybe, as it were, your boat is, just seems to be parked. You're not going anywhere. Maybe it's as if your, your net is empty. Your, your life is in turmoil. Perhaps you have a problem in your life tonight that you don't know what you're going to do about. Maybe it's a financial problem in your life. Maybe it's a family problem. Maybe it's a problem with your job. Maybe it's a marriage problem. Maybe it's some sort of a relationship that you have with someone. And you just you feel a wee bit like Peter. You feel like you're fighting against yourself. You feel like, like the night's long, like the boat's parked, but they're not empty. It's not a very good picture, sure, it's not. There's only one tonight that can answer your problem. There's only one tonight that can feel, fill the empty void in your life. There's only one that can fill the net. There's only one that can brighten the darkest night. There's only one that can enter, as it were, into your boat tonight and change your life. Ah, you see, that's where the story changed. Just three words in verse 1. It Four words. It came to pass. What came to pass? Jesus came. The hymn writer said, Jesus came along and he touched me. And I will never be the same. He touched me by his mighty power. Glory to his wondrous name. My life was filled with sin and confusion. My life was filled with sorrow and pain. Jesus came along and he touched me. And I will never be the same. You'll notice what he done. <clears throat> he got into the boat. Verse 3 tells us that. It came to pass that he passed by and he seen Peter washing the net. And verse 3 tells us he got into the boat. You see, there's a wee chorus that we used to sing in Sunday school. And it was this, with Christ in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. And with Christ in our vessel, with Christ in our boat, we can smile at the storm. Jesus got into the boat and he began to preach and teach from the boat. You see, that's when the change came. I want you to think of three things. We've thought about a long night. We've thought about a parked boat. We've thought about an empty net. I want you to think about a brighter day. He began to teach the people out of the boat. And then he says to Peter, Peter had got back into the boat, and he says to Peter, launch out into the deep. Let down your nets for a draft. Peter says... Lord, Master, he says, we've toiled all night. We have worked all night and we've caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Isn't it amazing that a fisherman from Galilee obeyed a carpenter from Nazareth? And Peter launched out the net. It was a long night, but there was a brighter day coming. 
There was an empty net, but it was going to be a full net. Because that's exactly what Peter done. He launched out the net. He let it down for a draft. Now listen, this is amazing what happened here. When Peter, <coughs> the way the Galilean fishermen done it, when they were washing their nets, they rolled them up in a circle almost. That's the way they, they piled them up when they, when they washed them. And so they set them at the end of the boat. And so they pushed the boat out a little into the deep. And Peter had done this process thousands of times before. The Sea of Galilee is surrounded on four sides by mountains. And there is a great breeze and it blows down through the valley from the north to the south, sometimes from the south to the north. There's always a breeze on the Sea of Galilee. And so Peter would have figured out what way the wind was blowing. And he lifted the nets out of the back of the boat and he threw the nets into the air. And as he threw the nets into the air, the Galilean breeze would have hit the net. And as it hit the net, it spread it out in the, in the wind, and the net fell into the sea. And Peter was standing at the end of the boat. And he watched his nets as it, they hit the water, and as they started to sink. And the Lord Jesus was in the front of the boat. And let's remember that even the wind and the sea obey him. And as that net hit the water, the Lord gave instruction to a shoal of fish that was over here to head towards the net. And I wonder did Peter watch in the clear waters of Galilee as the fish made their way into the net. A brighter day, a filled net, an overloaded boat. And he began to pull the net into the back of the boat. And there were so many fish in the net that the net began to break. There were so many fish in the net that he signaled to some of the other guys that were in the other boats, come and give me a hand, help me, quickly help me. And the other boats came and they helped him to pull the net. So many fish that the net, the, the, the net was full and the boat began to sink. So many fish in the boat. And Peter saw all this happen. And it was too much for him. And rightly so. And verse 8 <clears throat> tells us, it's coming up on the screen. When Simon Peter saw this all happening, he fell down at Jesus' knees. And he said, depart from me. For I am a sinful man, O Lord. Peter realized that he was in the presence of God himself. For God is a triune God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Peter realized he was in the presence of the Son of God. The great creator. He realized that in himself he was a sinner. And that's where we need to get to when we come to Jesus to get saved. We need to remember that we're sinners because each of us are plagued by sin. The Bible says that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden. And by one man's sin, one man's disobedience, Sin entered into the world. And death by sin, death has, sin has consequences. And as death is a consequence of sin, as one man's disobedience, sin entered into the world. And death by sin, so death has passed upon all men. That's me and you. Because I'm a sinner tonight. And you're a sinner. 
and we're all sinners in the sight of God. And it doesn't matter where you're from. There's no creed and there's no culture and there's no color. We're all sinners. When God looks down from heaven, he looks upon the sons of men and he sees that we're all sinners. Paul says when he writes to the Romans that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We're all sinners. And Peter realized on that great occasion that he was a sinner. He says, I am a sinful man, O Lord. I wonder, have you got there yet? There's many in the meeting tonight and they could come up to this desk and they could tell you of the day in life that they really realized that they were a sinner. They could realize the day in life when they come to the cross and they realized that there was no good in them and they turned to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. And because our sin has offended God, well then God had to punish sin. And there's only one that could take away our sin. And he was the Lord Jesus Christ, the very man in the boat on this particular occasion. And one day, three years or so after this great event, cruel men will take the Lord Jesus Christ to Calvary outside the city walls of Jerusalem. And he would be led, Isaiah said, as a sheep, as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shears is done. And he was led to Calvary, outside the city walls of Jerusalem. And Roman soldiers drove nails through his hands and through his feet, plotted a crown of thorns and placed it on his brow and hung him on a Roman cross for six hours from nine o'clock in the morning to three o'clock in the afternoon. And upon that cross, the Lord Jesus Christ suffered the great price and great penalty of our sin. The three hours of light. And then at noonday, God blotted the sun out. And upon the cross, God punished and poured upon his son the great wrath and great punishment and great price that was due for our sin. The psalmist said, Deep calleth on the deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and the billows are gone over me. And alone upon the cross, God's son bore the great price and the great wrath of God and the great price of sin for us. And the hymn writer said, none of the ransomed ever knew. How deep were the waters crossed, or how dark was the night the Lord passed through, or he found the sheep that was lost. And alone upon the cross, he bore the great price and great punishment of our sin. And at the ninth hour, Matthew says, Jesus cried with a loud voice, John says, finished the great price of redemption's pain. The great cost of salvation has been dealt with and is paid for. And Jesus died, bowed his head, and he gave up the ghost. He died. He died that we may be forgiven. He died to make us good. So we at last might go to heaven, saved by his precious blood. But it doesn't finish there. It doesn't finish at the cross. Because men came, two men, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. They came and they took the body of the Lord Jesus from the cross. And they wrapped it in linen and they put it in the tomb. It's because beside Calvary there was a garden. And in that garden a new tomb. Where never man was laid before. 
and they placed it in the tomb. And the Roman soldiers rolled a stone and put their seal upon him. But on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, there was women came. And they were coming walking down towards the tomb. And they were talking to each other. How, who's going to roll this great stone away? And how are we going to get into the tomb? But when they came, the stone was rolled away. And when they went into the tomb, there was an angel. And the angel said, he's not here. He is risen. Come see the place where the Lord lay. You see, men emptied the cross to fill the tomb, but God emptied the tomb to fill the throne. And there's a real man in heaven tonight, and he's able and he's willing to save all that come to God through him. You see, he came to save. He came to Bethlehem to save. He was born to save. Remember the angel said, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He was born to save, and he lived to save, and he died upon the cross to save, and he lay in the tomb, and he rose again to save, and he lives to save, because he lives in heaven tonight, and he lives in the power of an endless life. But you know, most of all, he wants to save tonight. He wants to save you. It's simply believing in Jesus that the weary and sinful find rest. Perhaps you're in the meeting tonight. Perhaps you're not used to coming to gospel meeting. You see, salvation is simple. God thought it. And Christ brought it. If it had been left up to man, it would have been complicated. But it's just simply believing in Jesus. Just like Peter of old, that day that we've thought about. Just remembering that you're a sinful man, sinful woman, sinful young person. And it's just coming to the cross at Calvary and realizing that when Jesus died upon the tree and shed his precious blood, he'd have done it for you and he'd done it for me. The hymn writer said, it's only a step to Jesus. Why not take it now? I wonder would you come to me as our meeting's finished, as we pray, pray and sing our closing hymn. I wonder would you come to me and accept the great offer of mercy. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our God and Father, <clears throat> we thank thee tonight for the simplicity of the gospel message. We thank thee tonight that it's for the whosoever will. There's no discrimination with them. And all may come for Christ this day. And so we pray in the final closing moments of this meeting, O God, that you would bring the saving grace that you would give someone the courage to take that great step and answer the great call of mercy. Be the prayer to defeat the work of the devil. We know in quiet moments like this, he comes, he tries to steal away the seed, lest they should believe him to see him. O oh God, we pray to defeat his work tonight and bring the saving grace. Help us to sing our closing hymn and take us to our homes in safety for Christ's sake. Amen.